Um, good morning YouTube. Um, we're getting ready to do an install on our little bitty trailer and this is my good buddy, pal, and friend now, Mr. Steve. Hi. Um, and if you're in the Reno area, uh, air if you're in the Reno area and you need to have installs done on solar, this is the man to see. He's done one or two thousand. Um, <laughs> so probably something you want to do. But over here on the table is what we're putting in today. So we've got a multi plus two. Got a couple of solar charge controllers for the solar that's going on board. Our Servo GX and our color panel. <clears throat> but if you think that's all that's involved, <laughs> sadly mistaken. I think we're under something good. Steve is working right here is our famous <coughs> Battleborn Game Changer 3.0. What? 3.0. 270 amp hours by three batteries. That's a whole lot of power. And then Steve brought some big panels we're going to put on. They're 405 watts and they're actually rated for a heavy snow load and high winds. So we're ending up with about 2200 watts of solar on the roof. And Steve, my man back here, says it should be about five hours to go from dead to fully charged on the entire battery bank. So we're really looking forward to getting this all done. Steve, why do I have these really cool Victron Energy 150 by 100 controllers? Man, they look good in that bay. But why are they there? They're there to turn the sun's power into free energy. But it came with this little itty bitty one that was just running my one single battery. So you're trying to tell me because I'm going to have over 2200 watts on the roof i need to have this to split those yeah so we could get away with one if we were using one type of panel but since your rv came with two 320 watt panels we're going to leave those two up there and add three 405 watt panels so they have to be separated because wattages and voltages don't match and when you wire solar you can't do that you have to keep things similar but i've got enough room in my controllers my mppts that I can add two more panels of the 320 type that I had. Yes, absolutely. And we're not reaching capacity on any one of the controllers. No, we'll be about 85% of the available uh, power of the charge controller once you add two more to your existing system. And what's the 150-100 mean? So 150-100 is the, the 150 is the maximum voltage that your solar panel array can be run at. The 100 amps, is or the 100 is how many amps of charging capacity on the battery side you have so if you have 100 amps at 12 volts technically 14.4 is about the max 14.6 on certain batteries that gives you 1460 watts of solar that you can charge the batteries directly with the the those numbers change um, based on the model based on how many batteries you have how many panels you have how fast you want to charge them that's what that variable means. So with about 2,000 watts of power gonna be on the roof and my two new MPPT controllers, I should be able to take my 810 amp hours of batteries, that just blows my mind to say that, right. yeah. um, and charge that from zero to like five? Five hours, is that what you said, to like full? Something five like to six hours, yeah, that should be about right. That's crazy. Yeah. So excited, can't wait to get this done, woo! And now while I've got Steve, you know, just in the worst position ever. <laughs> ask me questions. I'm gonna ask you questions, what? What are you doing? Trying to break, not break stuff. <laughs> Ugh, perfect. So no fingers in the way. Still got all the fingers. Yep, we're clear. And that's my Multi Plus 2, which is a 3000 watt, 50 amp service inverter. Two hot legs, you can run a full 50 amp service on this in pass through when you're connected to shore power. And when you're not connected to shore power, you have 3000 VA available. So about 2400 watts available all the time, peak 3000. It's an awesome unit, super flexible, super adaptable for many uses. It's a great unit. So I can actually turn my TV on without having to run my generator? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yes. That's the most exciting part for me. 
<laughs> and with uh, with soft starts in your AC, you can actually run uh, one AC unit off of this as well. Um, actually, these only pull um, just a little over 10. So you can probably do two. So I'll be able to get away with two. Yeah, and you got enough battery for it. So 810 amp hours, what's that relate to? How, for the people out there that don't have a clue that we're educating today. Um, amp hours is is one part of the, the, the power equation. So you have volts times amps equals watts. And a watt is an actual unit of measurement. So amp hours at a certain voltage, you multiply that voltage times the amps and you get what your available watt hours are. So at 810 amp hours, at 14.4 volts, you end up with approximately, you're gonna have to cut this out because I gotta do the math really quick. I can't <laughs> math at the moment. So we're just gonna leave that. Um, God, what is it? <clears throat> I'm actually gonna do 13.6 times 270 equals it's 3.6 kilowatts per battery kilowatt hours times three okay so with your 810 amp hours at your 13.6 volts which is your float voltage of these batteries you have a total of 11,000 watts of energy in your storage capacity so what that means is if you are running something that is a thousand watts like a microwave you would be able to run that for 11 hours you have 1000 watts times 11 hours is 1000 or 11,000 watt hours that's just crazy it is or you could run 11,100 watt light bulbs for one hour an hour that's just crazy yeah yep. so excited so excited all right, so now that we've hung the controllers and we've got the inverter multi plus two in them, now you're getting ready to bring all those together. And I asked a question, and for the people out there, you've got to put rings on one of them, and that's going to the actual multi plus two. Yeah, so. And those are them. Yes. And then the other ones are just going to be bald or straight wire yeah. going into the connection. So yes. that's going into the MPPTs. And yet that's going into our multi plus two. And, and then you got this cute little toy. What's this cute little toy too? This little toy is the Godzilla of uh, hydraulic crimpers. And this gives us 12 US tons of pressure to crimp this terminal onto these bare wires in a way that will reduce uh, any sort of resistance whatsoever and make the cleanest possible electrical path. And so I'm gonna ask you, because there's some controversy about this. Yeah. When it's time to actually strip this back and then put it in here, some mm -hmm. people say that you don't go beyond the end of the ring connector. And then some people actually run it beyond it. So we just wanna go in and not have anything exposed on the end down here, right? We don't wanna have any extra wire showing here. Uh, in my experience, I have never really felt that there is that much of a difference in what we're doing with this. If we're running this at capacity in really high temperatures, maybe it might make a difference. But if you look... Yeah, that's pretty tight. That's tight. So we've got a little bit coming out the other end, which is what you want. And you've got it nice and flush. And that's it. You must be a professional. You've done this once or twice. It's like I have, yes. <laughs> I, I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Oh, that's how I became a pilot. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. We're moving right along. There's power back to the coach. He's done all the stuff with the 6.3 and we're just moving along. And then comes panels. Oh my God, we're moving fast. <laughs> 